chosen party. It's a chosen party. Don't stop. Yes, sir. Amen. Amen. You guys are excited to be here this morning. Amen. God is good. God is good. We give honor to our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. We thank God for this, the day that the Lord has made. We rejoice. Amen. I choose to rejoice and be glad in it. Thankful for uh, this time, this day, this season that we're in. We thank God for just an abundance of joy, an abundance of peace, even in this season. Praise God. Anybody, anybody got joy this morning? Anybody walking in peace and favor and the grace and mercy? Amen, amen. Amen. We are thankful, truly thankful. We are um, going to go forward, bro. We're going to go forward in this. Um, I don't really have a whole lot other to say other than what the Lord has given me to say. Um, I do have one announcement that um, will be preaching for United Faith next Sunday at 1130. 1130-ish yes, kind of depends on what happens here. But what we're going to do, uh, we're going to have a modified service. We're going to try to start five or ten minutes early, uh, get the praise and worship, uh, and then get right to the word. And I'm going to cut out and, and help out our sister church. Uh, I know it's the holiday season and your, pres your presence is requested but not required. Yes, if you have other things or you just want to take that time off, that's that's quite fine, quite fine. But if you if you do want to go further with me, I will not turn you down. <laughs> Amen. United Faith is our sister church and every time they, uh, we're well, actually our baby, we're covering them. So whenever they reach out, I do uh, all that is within me to be there for them. And if you can make it, it would be greatly appreciated. All right, and we had an outstanding time last night at our, at our first Christmas dinner. Oh, man, we, we had a blast. We had a blast. I needed that relaxation. needed that time just to uh, let my hair down. Amen. Amen. I was, I, and the, the white elephant game was a lot more fun than I thought it was going to be. It was a lot of fun, man. even though I got a, a Christmas blanket, a Christmas blanket. I could not get anybody to steal my Christmas blanket. <laughs> hey, well, I wrapped up in it last night and watched TV. That thing was warm. Hey, I, had a, I had an outstanding time. Thank God for everybody that helped make that uh, a great occasion. It was a really great time. Amen. All right, so let's, uh, do we have children's church? Okay, children's church, you guys, young adults. All right, children's and children and young adults. Praise God. While they are getting themselves together, we are going to go to the word. Uh, but before we go to the word, I have a declaration. I believe we have the declaration. <laughs> Okay, yeah, no Bible study on Wednesday. Enjoy your family and friends. So, declare this with me, if you don't mind. Say, today, today. I release warrior angels of God, angels of God. To, protect to protect me and my family. And my family. I, I and my entire household, my entire household are, shielded are shielded and protected with the fiery wall of God's protection. I cover myself, family, and property with the blood of Jesus. Uh, praise God. I cover myself, my family, and my property with the blood of Jesus. Declaration brings possession. So I shall have what I have declared. I declare it, I decree it, it's already so, it's done, in Jesus' mighty name, amen, amen, and amen, praise God, amen, I declare it in Jesus' name. So turn with me to the book of Mark chapter 14, I'm going to read verses 3 through 9, a little extensive, but I just want to make sure. We frame this text and keep it in context. Mark chapter 14. I'm going to start reading at verse number 3. 
We're going to read down to verse number 9. When you have it, when you have it, say amen. amen. If you don't have it, you can look on with your neighbor to the intent that we may read the word of God as a family. Or look on our screen. And being in Bethany at the house of Simon the leper, as he sat at the table, a woman came having an alabaster flax, a very costly spikenard. Then she broke the flask and poured it on his head. But there were some who were indignant among themselves and said, why was this fragrant oil wasted? For it might have been sold for more than 300 denarii and given to the poor. And they criticized her sharply. But Jesus said, let her alone. Why do you trouble her? She has done a good work for me. For you have the poor with you always. And whenever you wish, you may do them good. But me do you not have always. She has done what she could. She has come beforehand to anoint my body for burial. Yeah. Assuredly, I say to you, wherever this gospel is preached in the whole world, what this woman has done will also be told as a memorial for her. Praise yeah. God. Yeah. Amen. And I, I chose for a topic or a text, as you would, that you've been chosen to change the atmosphere. Yeah. You have been chosen, you so you have been chosen to change the atmosphere. Amen. Somebody say that with me. I've been chosen to change the atmosphere. Amen. Let's pray. Father, we thank you for this time. We ask you, dear Lord, to maximize this time and speak to us out of the volume of your holy book. Words of life, clarity, authority, and conviction. Father God, we stand at the ready to receive. The infallible truth in your word today. Feed us until we are spiritually satisfied. Feed us until we have an adequate allocation of faith that will take us into the days to come. We give you glory, honor, and praise because you alone are worthy. It's in Jesus' mighty name we pray. Amen. You may have your seats in the presence of the Lord. Amen. Beloved God desires to be sought after. Thank you, ushers, for your kind and friendly service. You may rest off of your feet. But God, beloved, desires to be sought after. He, he desires for us to seek after him, seek his face, seek the Lord while he may be found, call upon him while he is yet near. God likes for us to put forth effort to get into his presence. God wants to find us in pursuit of him. He wants us to be the initiators of the communication and the worship. He wants us to solicit actions that causes a response from him when he finds us in pursuit of him. He'll make himself available if we seek after him. When God finds you in pursuit, he will open up the windows of heaven and pour you out a blessing that you won't even have room enough to, be, to receive. Now, I must tell you to be careful what you pursue because whatever you chase after, you'll worship. So, so if you're chasing after something other than God, sooner or later you will find yourself worshiping what it is you're chasing after. I know you heard the song, I'm chasing after you, praise God, that we should be chasing God, pursuing God, and every opportunity we get, we ought to be trying to get into God's presence. But I have to give you a, a disclaimer and a forewarning before we go into the, the meat and potatoes of the text is that I have found that the love is gone. Yeah. That in the vast majority of, of church goers, Praise God. Even those who are saved, sanctified, and filled with heaven's best, I found that the love is gone. And today we come into God's presence like spectators in a concert. <laughs> we sit around and evaluate the best entertainer and we see who can move us the most. 
Amen. Because the church has somewhat become talent driven. That we are attracted to the talents that come forth in the church. And we try to see who can move us the most. Who can sing us the happiest. Who can preach us the highest. And we are trying to get a move from people as opposed to a move from God. Well, I come to tell you, I didn't come to move you today. I came to move God to move on your behalf. That, uh, when you really come into a worship service, that we ought to be inspiring God to move on our behalf. That if the praise team don't hit it just right, or I don't hum and hold my ear in the right tune, uh, that we ought to come because we want God to move in our lives. Anybody want God to move? on your behalf today. We have gotten so used to God that we decide whether or not we are going to worship based on how we feel. But how many know that the best time to worship God is when your heart is broke? Oh my God. The best, I, got the word, I feel my help coming on. The best time to praise God is when you don't have anything going for you at all. It's easy to worship God when God is making all of your dreams come true. But the best time to worship is in the most inopportune times of life. You can worship God based on how you feel. Because God is not a genie in the lamp or the maker of our miracles. God is God on the mountaintop and God in the valley low. But what I found is that when we worship God based on our feelings, we create a culture of lazy Christians. <sighs> because lazy Christians only going to bless God when it's the right time. Good God Almighty. Lazy Christians only going to serve God when it's the right time for them. But when you are dedicated to God and dedicated to the mission and dedicated to who God is, you will serve God even when you don't understand God. You will serve God and worship God even when all you know what has broken loose in your life. You got to serve God in spirit or worship God in spirit and in truth. And that is not predicated on the way that we feel. Because how many know your emotions will betray you? Yeah. Your life will even lie to you. Anybody ever had your life tell you something that your spirit was saying something totally opposite to what your life was saying? Your life won't even tell you the truth. That's why you've got to get up in the spirit and see what God has to say about your life. But sometimes, beloved, I find that we schedule God like a dentist appointment. We schedule God like we're on an appointment to the doctor and we need to schedule time to be with God. But I wonder if there's anybody left in the church or in the world that can just get with God on a spontaneous basis. I wonder if there's anybody left in the world that don't have to make it to your secret closet for you to have an encounter with God. I wonder if there's anybody left that you ain't got God on the clock. You ain't telling God when to move and when to stop moving. I wonder if there's anybody left that has the prayer, anyway you bless me. Oh, I got a few folks left that say, anyway you bless me. I'll be satisfied. Every chance we get, we ought to be going into the presence of God. We've gotten used to who we used to be in love with. We are not the first generation to get used to God. The disciples wrestled with the same thing. When they first met God, when they first met Christ, they were impressed with him in so much that they quit their jobs and left everything they had simply to follow him. He healed the sick and raised the dead, but that became commonplace to the disciples. Watch this. The issue was that they walked with Jesus during the normal days. And during the normal days is when they began to lose their love for who Jesus was. You see, sometimes we only talk to Jesus when we need something. When we need a miracle to be made. But can you talk with him in the normal days? Can you have the same uh, fervency of relationship when he's not making a way out of nowhere and when he's not moving on your behalf? They walk with Jesus in the normal days and I'm sure the vernacular changed from Lord to brother. So now they're at, the, at Bethany at Simon's house and it's just another day. 
It's no big deal that they're walking with the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords. And I'm sure that they were saying, but the Lord knows my heart. Wow. So when they came, they didn't even pull out his chair. Nobody washed his hands or his feet. They all gathered around and Jesus, in this instance, was just another one of the boys. Can you put yourself in the text with me and just see the disciples and Jesus walking into Simon's house and everybody's ready to eat and they're tired from the long journey and they're just sitting there ready to see what's happening next. This leads me to my first point. They just got challenged. So now all of a sudden they're challenged with change. Because here comes this woman through the door. <laughs> she had no title. She had no position. She had no poise. She had no prestige. She had no stature. She was a nobody to the disciples. It was Mary, Martha, and Lazarus' sister. She was not a welcome guest. In fact, there was a rumor out about her. So when she came through the door, the disciples started murmuring about her. So instantly she walked into a room that was filled with hostility. The atmosphere, somebody say the atmosphere, not received like her, didn't even acknowledge it. It was a challenge, but she walked through it. Watch this. It did not influence her. Even though she walked through it, it did not walk through her. Even though she was in it, she did not let it get into her because she realized I'm here for a mission and a purpose. I'm here to see Jesus. But isn't it funny how you can be where Jesus is and still be a room full of hostility? Isn't it funny how you can go somewhere where the king of kings dwells and the lord of lords is and things still not be right? Isn't it funny how you can be where God himself is and there still be issues and problems where it is that you say that God is in the same place? And it becomes a challenge to not allow people to change you. It becomes a challenge. To go into an adverse atmosphere and not be affected by the atmosphere. But somebody said she kept coming. She, kept coming. she was tough enough to be controversial and keep coming because she was chosen to, to change things. One of the things that I love about this text is how she kept coming even though she was not welcome to even be there. One thing I love about it is that she was so tenacious that she bypassed everybody that was in Jesus' presence just to get to him. Beloved, you got to know why you come to church. Beloved, you got to know why you come into God's presence. You can't get confused because everybody else is not acting like they love the Lord. It's because you have been chosen to change the atmosphere. Why else would God bring a woman into a place like this unless he wanted her to show the disciples what they were no longer doing for the Lord anymore? Indoors, they did not even like, and she worshipped him the way that they, oh, okay, you follow me, the way they should have been worshipping him. But she could not have gotten it done if she allowed for the criticism to get to her. Oh. Real quick, you ought to tell your neighbor, you got to toughen up. You got, you got to toughen up. Everybody going to talk about you. Everybody going to have something to criticize you for. But you can't make that keep you from coming to the Lord and Savior. Amen. Hey, if you can't handle a little bit of criticism, ain't no way you're going to be able to worship God in spirit and in fact, criticism just really endorses that God is for you. People don't criticize people that are not doing anything. So the fact that you have critics means that you must be doing something worth criticizing. Oh, Lord have mercy. you got to put away poisonous presumptions. The challenge that the disciples had in the text is that they thought they knew Jesus. They walked with him so long, and I'm sure they were used to or accustomed to him, but they thought that they actually knew Jesus. They were too presumptuous in their relationship and knowledge of Christ, and in that presumption, they lost their love, reverence, and respect for Christ. The problem with this generation is that the enemy has been able to dupe us 
into believing that we really know the mind of God. Oh my God. That the, that the enemy has been able to dupe us into believing that the way we do it is the only way to do it. He's been duping us to believe that we actually know how God is going to move and we actually can endorse who God uses to move. Uh, that we actually know the mind of God on what he's going to do, how he's going to do it, and when he's going to do it. Uh, but I came to serve notice uh, that we serve a God uh, that will take a nobody, send them to everybody to tell them about somebody who can say, I come to serve notice that you can't choose who God to decides to use. That if God decides to use somebody, it becomes a challenge for you to receive that person God sent to use. God can raise up a baby that will come and prophesy the whole house down. God can use a quiet person uh, that will have a word from the Lord uh, that will change the very trajectory of what it is which served, put a praise on the inside, and when it comes out, everybody know this must be. This must be. But he's called us to actually think or believe that we know an indescribable, incomprehensible God. The same God that created the heavens and the earth. The same God that created the sun, moon, and the stars. The same God that created everything and put a seed in it and told it just go reproduce after it. That same God that is our Lord and Savior, the enemy has us believing we know the very mind of God. If I knew everything God was going to do, would I really need to serve him? If I could predict what God was going to do and fully describe or ascribe who he is, I would diminish God, the creator of everything, to my human intellect. This is the, this is the problem this generation has is that they use their intellect to describe God and they believe that what they have come up with in their intellect is all that God really is. But God is greater than all of our minds combined. Oh my God. God is so great and powerful, there is no measure or scale that can measure his IQ. Mm -hmm. There is nothing that we have to measure by that can measure how great God really is. He told me also to tell you, don't relax. Don't relax. You ain't made it yet. Don't relax at this point in your salvation. Don't get comfortable on the level where you are now because we become too comfortable with God's presence because in biblical times when they felt the presence of God, they stopped where they were built an altar and called Jehovah right there. But now beloved, we got, we God has got to do something big for us to give him glory. We don't give him glory for waking us up in the morning anymore. We don't give him glory that we have the activity of our limbs and a reasonable portion of health. Uh, we're waiting to bless God for the house on the hill. Uh, coincidentally, the same house that's going to waste away when the Lord comes back. Uh, we wait to bless God for the raise on the job. Uh, not really knowing the raise on the job uh, is going to confine you into a space uh, where you can't bless God like you did on this level. Uh, we're waiting to bless God for the new car. Uh, not knowing that the car you got paid off uh, was a blessing from God. Uh, and we're blessing material things, uh, but we're not blessing God that we made the wake up list. Uh, we're not blessing God that we have activity of our limbs. Uh, we're not blessing God that our family circle has not been broken. Uh, we're not blessing God for taking us up and down the dangerous highways. Uh, let me update the files. Uh, you ain't got to bless God for the car. Uh, God can give you a car anytime. Uh, but I dare you to bless God uh, that you got breath in your lungs. Uh, I dare you to bless God uh, that your baby is still alive. I dare you to bless God that your body is healed. I dare you to bless God. That kind of a little shot. He kind of a bless God for the little things. God ain't interested in giving you a new car. That's the desire from your heart. God said, I would that you be in good health and prosper even as your. So don't relax. Right here. We got to continue 
to climb and go higher and higher. Come on, and higher. I'm trying to keep it in English. I've got to pray with me. And higher. Don't relax at this level of your salvation. Because there are always higher heights to go. There are always deeper depths to find. Oh, my second point. Change. Somebody say change. change. This woman. Oh my God. This woman was a sinner. But her sin taught her something. Some things when you go on through tailors your future. Some things you've gone through in your past help tailor what you're going to do in your future. Watch this. Nothing that you've been through in your life has been happenstance or accident. Nothing you've been through has taken God by surprise. Nothing that you've been through will be wasted. But you've got to know that change requires what? Change. <laughs> you can't expect to see change until you expect to be changed. Good God Almighty. So watch this. Your issues, past and present, teach you priorities that you don't have as long as you did to play games with God. Wow. Amen. Having God's grace and mercy abound for you a few times ought to let you know that you are not keeping this together by yourself. That it's only by the grace and the mercy of God. So this woman has been through a few things and she realized, look, I ain't got time to keep playing. She realized I haven't been through enough. What the song? I've been through too much not to worship him. So when she came, the disciples got indignant immediately. Immediately started talking about this woman that dared come into this house. But I'm sure, and I put the tell for some of the text with me, she was tenacious, and I'm sure that she was saying, I ain't studying y'all. I ain't even come to see y'all anyway. Y'all walking with the, the king of all kings, and I see his feet still dirty. Y'all walking with the Lord of all lords, and y'all didn't even pull out the table or chair for him to sit down. Y'all walking around with the king of glory, God's only begotten son, and all of y'all sitting around chilling. Y'all should be at his feet or at his side saying, Master, teach me something about him. Come on, God. Sometimes it takes a sinner to awaken a saint. Oh, y'all ain't even hear what I'm saying. Y'all think we the cream of the crop. We the best thing to happen. But sometimes it takes a sinner to help us to realize we don't love God like we say we love God. Yeah, we're judging them because they're not on this side yet. Somebody say they ain't over here yet. But, but if you're not careful, they might take your place. They might do a switch. If you're not careful to keep judging those that we call sinners, they're on the pathway to greatness. Because every saint has a past and every sinner has a future. So sometimes it takes sinners to awaken saints. Because truth be told, we get comfortable. We get comfortable with God. We are comfortable we even with church. We get so comfortable with church that we got to be some happy. But I remember the time we used to come happy. Y'all, right. some of y'all ain't even old enough to know what I'm talking about. There was a time where we came to church happy. But now we got to be some happy. We come put our purse down or put our Bible down and say, all right, praise him. You got 10 minutes to get my head in the right space. Y'all know what I'm talking about. Y'all don't even know what I'm talking about. We come in and say, I didn't bring nothing, but I plan to get something. But I came from the old church. I came from a church with mothers. We had a deacon's corner. We had a minister's corner. We had little old mothers in the church. They would say, I won't take nothing back from this journey. Blessed be the name. I came from a church where it only took somebody to say, bless it. And then the whole church would say, be the name of the Lord. Y'all know what I'm talking about. I came from a church where 
it didn't take anything to catch that whole church on fire. Because they came to church happy. They came to church blessing the Lord. They didn't have a whole lot like we have now. But they came to church and said, Lord, I just want to thank you. Lord, I just want to bless you. Lord, I just want to give you glory. Lord, I just want to give you honor. I just thank God that I'm saved, sanctified, filled with the Holy Ghost. And that was the whole testimony. But as soon as that little old mother got up, took about two minutes to get up, but when she finally got up, look, oh, y'all ain't here. Don't get back to this morning. I came from a church where the mothers outdanced the young people. Oh, y'all, I don't think y'all understand. I came from a church where they were so happy and so joyful. They get up and hold the pew, and they still give God glory. They'll say, I thank God. I ain't got much time left, but while the blood is running warm in my mouth. But now, we've been challenged with change. But when Whenever you can get into the presence of God, you ought to be glad that you made it there. Amen. Anytime you get into the presence of God, you ought not have any hang-ups or and you ought not have any, any issues. You ought to be just glad that you're there and just abide as long as you can. And true worship, beloved, is not something you can practice. Amen. True praise is not something you can look in the mirror and do what we call a praise check. Y'all don't know what I'm talking about, do you? Y'all got anybody know about praise check? I, I think the women do it more than the men to make sure the dance stays holy. All the babies on that side, I can talk to you. But true worship cannot be practiced. Because when the Spirit, oh my, when the Spirit of the Lord comes upon your heart, you, you start to dance like David danced. Mm. When the Spirit of the Lord, you, you can't say, well, I practice the spin, so I'm going to do the spin when the Holy Ghost hit. I, I practice my cute hallelujah, so I'm going to do my cute hallelujah when the Lord hit. When the Spirit of the Lord hits you, you're going to get that ugly church face. When the Spirit of the Lord hits you, you're going to dance, and you ain't going to know what happened. When the Spirit of the Lord really hits you, people got to tell you what happened. People got to tell you. Girl, you shot the whole church down Sunday. In the spirit of the Lord. Tell your neighbor, stop practicing. Stop practicing. Just come to church, relax, and let the Lord. Shut it up. Lord have mercy. I'm talking about true worship. Talking about worship that can't be authenticated or validated by anybody. I'm talking about the type of worship that even sinners can give. I know we give sinners a bad rap, but we're just sinners saved by grace. Lord have mercy. We're just sinners saved. All right, let me show you something. Let me show you something. Oh, Lord have mercy. When you've been changed, you can't wait to get into God's presence. Amen. When you've been challenged with change and you accept the change, it starts to happen from the inside out. So watch this. This woman got into the presence of the Lord and she gave herself away to him. She worshiped him with reckless abandonment. And the only way you can worship like God like that is when you've been through something. I wonder, anybody in here been through something today? Yeah. Anybody here had an adverse trial to where when you bless God, you're blessing God for real? She knew they were murmuring about her. She knew they had motives about her, but it made no difference to her. She fell at his feet and worshipped him in a spontaneous way. Watch this. True worship just happens. True worship is a spontaneous event, unrehearsed, something that your heart creates in the power of the moment. You can't know which way you're going to go. It just happens. You can't know how you're going to bless God. It just happens. When you are caught up in the throne of worship, you are just blessing the Lord how you bless the Lord. Anybody ever been to the place where you say, I need thee, O Lord. Every hour, I need thee. Bless me now, my Savior. I come to thee. True worship, beloved, just happens. 
It's something where you got to add worth. Worship is truly worship. It's ascribing worth to your God. So when you are worshiping, can you imagine if we really worship God according to all that he was worth to us? Good God Almighty. I can set a mouthful right now. I can sit down. That, that God is desiring this spirit and the true worship we're talking about is us worshiping God according to what he's worth to us. Can you imagine if God said, well, that's how much I'm worth to you, huh? Wow. That, that's how much I'm worth to you. Then he pulls out his resume on how much we were worth to him. I don't think anybody even wow. understand words of the coming out of my mind. How much we were worth to him. That he came in bodily form. He didn't have to, but he did. Came and walked, tabernacled in flesh as we were to become our kinsman, redeemer. He didn't have to, but he did. God sent his only begotten son. He didn't have to, but he did. He lived this life without fame, riches, fortune, or anything. He didn't have to, but he did endured severe trials and temptations for us. He didn't have to, but he did because we were worth that to him. Even with the knowledge that all the way in 2021, we still would be giving him what he's worth. And he died on an old rugged cross. Put nails in his hands and nails in his feet and he hung on an old rugged cross after that which he carried that cross up Golgotha Hill. After that which they put a crown of thorns on his head and slapped him and put a robe on him and they beat him with cat nine tails until he didn't even resemble a man. He did all of that because we were worth that to him. Then he hung on that old rugged cross. Severe pain and trauma to be the sacrifice for our sins. He didn't have to, but he did. So until we can match that level of effort, <laughs> we ought to be giving God glory every opportunity that we get because he deserves all of our praise. Yeah. So she came, so she came and she bypassed all of the disciples to get into the presence of Jesus and now she's in the power of the moment in his presence and said I must give something because I'm in his presence. Mm -hmm. Love makes you give. If anybody tells you they love you and they constantly take, that's not love. Love ventilates itself by giving. And whenever you come into the presence of God, you ought to be thinking, what have I to render? What have I to give in the power of this moment? So now she's worshiping God. And I want you to notice it's not her bodily movements that changed the atmosphere. <laughs> but it was the fact that she gave. And what happened is she poured out an alabaster flax or an alabaster box full of costly ointment. Yes. Now, perhaps the rumors about her was true. That she was a woman of the night and this was her earnings. Mm -hmm. What was in this flask was her earnings. The oil was costly. It was expensive. So expensive that the disciples got indignant saying, why did she waste all this oil when it could have been sold for some denarii? So it was expensive. But let me show you something. This oil was expensive physically, but the oil we carry is expensive spiritually. Because nobody knows the cost of the anointing that you carry in your life. First of all, nobody can see oh, the anointing that's in your life. You couldn't see what was in the alabaster box just by looking at it. 
You can't see the anointing that's in your life just by looking at you. And sometimes we have misgivings about people because they don't look anointed. But nobody knows how much it costs. Can you imagine if people really came to church and were honest about what was going on? We don't know what it costs people to make it into church today. We don't know what they're going through out there and they just barely made it into the house. We don't know what it costs to be you. Some people are smiling. Some people are sitting there. But can you imagine if they actually had a chance to tell you what was really going on? And can you imagine what would happen if they would tell you, man, I just came from a, a tough situation and I came because I heard that the Lord was in this place. And we are so taken back by the way they look. We don't really realize that God is stirring up the apothecary, the anointing in that vessel that they're saying, if I can just get to Jesus, Jesus. I'm going to worship him like all of them saints don't know how to worship him. They sitting in church relaxed, calm, and cool. But if they knew where I came from, if they knew where I've been, if they knew what I've been through, I just came to see Jesus. They just came to have church. I came to see Jesus. I came because I need a move of God in my life. I came because my home is broken up. My marriage is broken up. My children are going crazy. My money's acting funny. I, I can't keep my life together. I, I want to stop being in the world, I, but I can't help it. I, but I heard I, the man named Jesus I, can fix everything I got going on. I, so when I get into his presence, I, I ain't got time I, for everything else. I, I must see Jesus. That's how she came in. That was she came in with reckless abandonment. She said, I, I, this is my last chance. I'm taking everything I have and I'm trying to get to the feet of Jesus. I told her issues cost her something. So when she got there, she said, I ain't got to play. I ain't got time to play. I ain't got time for all this other stuff. I, I ain't got time. I came to see Jesus. And beloved, we're living in a time now where we've got to stop playing church. Amen. You have to stop playing church. Either God is your Lord and Savior or He's not. Time out for trying to get the praise team to sing us into a good headspace. Tell your neighbor, if you didn't bring nothing, how you going to expect to get something? I turn my back because I know y'all want to say it to your neighbor. You didn't bring nothing. How you going to expect? This woman came into the presence of God and brought something. Well, oh, let me update that. She didn't bring something. She brought everything she had. Oh, she brought everything she had and she said if I could just get what I have to Jesus and she came with the intent and the purpose of giving it all to him how you know Pastor Shai because she didn't open it and pour it out she broke it and put it on she broke it and put it on oh. if you open something you can control what comes out if you open something, you can put the top back on it when you're tired of pouring out. See, some of us got an open praise. I'm just going to pour out some of my praise to you. But when the time gets right, I'm going to bottle it back up again. Hey, there's somebody in here, you need to go on and break the box. When the box is broken, you can't control how the worship comes out. When the box is broken, uh, it comes out of all your hurt places, uh, all your damaged places. Uh, when you break the box, you can't put it back together again. Uh, once the cat is let out the bag, uh, you got to go and worship God. You need a broke the box praise. We got too many people pouring out their praise. Uh, no, it's time out for pouring out your praise. Uh, Giving God what you think He's worth. Uh, he's the King of all kings uh, and the Lord of all. And uh, one day we gonna come up in here and somebody gonna have an alabaster box praise. You will know it when it happens. 
Because ain't no usher going to be able to hold them down. You'll know it when it happens. Because they'll be dancing 20 minutes in. And everybody else looking around like, why is Eleanor over there blessing God? How she blessing God? What is wrong with her? Y'all don't know that she came with a broke the box praise. She ain't got two hours to bless God. She came and said, I got to have it now. I need what I need now. Y'all go on over there with your service. But me over here in this corner, it's me and the Lord and the oil all over his feet. I'm trying to give you a visual. We get tired when people come with a radical praise. Because it's time for us to go on home. But you'd be surprised. You'd be surprised when somebody really gets broken. And instead of watching, say it again, instead of watching, oh, that's one thing about when somebody starts blessing God, that should be an indication that the presence of the Lord has descended in this place. Oh, well, come on, somebody. If somebody gets into the presence of God, that simply means that God's Holy Spirit is here for us to get what we need. Why am I going to watch you get yours when I got something I need for the Lord too? Why am I going to judge how long it take you to get yours? The amount of time I spend watching you, I can go on and get in his presence and make my own broke box moment. I ain't got to watch you to get it. I got a need too. But when I see you get it, I said, up the Lord is here. Let me get in his presence. Let me get what I need from the Lord. Y'all don't want Pastor Shy to get in a broke box moment. Because I ain't going to care. I ain't going to do our little cute benediction. I ain't going to worry about what's going on where I am in my sermon. I ain't going to put a bookmark there. I'm just going to bless God. I'm going to bless him like I need him. I'm going to bless him like he's my king. I'm going to bless him like he's my savior. I'm going to bless him like he saved me. I'm going to bless him like he filled me. I'm going to bless him like he's the lover of my soul. I'm going to bless him like he's the keeper of my secrets. I'm going to bless him like ain't nobody else here. I'm going to bless him. According to his excellent. His excellent greatness. Let me let me finish. Let me get this. Let me get this in your hearing and we can go. In the power of the moment, she used the expensive perfumed oil to anoint Jesus for the burial. It could have been sold for a lot of money, but there was a precedence that had to be set with the way that she worshiped the Lord. Because when you're in the presence of the Lord, business and protocol does not matter. When you're in the presence of the Lord and you have been chosen, I'm saying this because there are people here that have been chosen to change the atmosphere. There are people that God has strategically placed here that have been chosen to change the atmosphere by your worship, by your praise, by your giving, by your attitude, by who God has made you to be. You have been chosen to change the atmosphere because out of the abundance of us have gotten too used to the presence of God. Complacent. We become so complacent. Even when we see miracles, I got to tell you, y'all, we just saw a miracle. Clap your hands. Wow. Even when somebody gets saved, I got to say, come on, y'all. The angels in heaven are rejoicing. Come on, clap your hands. That's how you know we become used to the presence of God. We should become so in tune with God's presence. That when somebody comes in that we don't know or have not seen, we ought to view that as an opportunity, a divine appointment. God sent them here because God has something special for 
Yeah. Uh, are you hearing what I'm saying? Don't look at how they look. Don't look at how they're dressed. Don't worry about what they have going on. But know that if they came, they're on divine assignment. Amen. And you can either be beneficiary or you can be a liability to how they receive the presence of God. Chosen. She broke the box. She hadn't been called or appointed, but she was anointed for that season. She didn't open her praise. She broke the box and whatever came out, came out. We've been opening and closing our praise and worship too long. God is looking for someone who's willing, ready and able to go all out in reckless abandonment and to his presence. Every one of you that still has exclusive control over your worship, you're open, not broken. Because when you get broken, you'll realize, Lord, I need you. What I'm doing is not working. There's a level of brokenness that's necessary to worship God like this. You can't worship God like this if you think you made all the ways and you maneuvered around. But when you know that you really need God is when you worship like this. When you've been chosen to change things, and I'm coming to a close. In another translation of this very same text, it talks about she let down her hair. And washed his feet with her hair. So, so that means something that in, in, in biblical times, a woman's hair was her glory. It was her glory. So the text is there saying in the other translation, she let down her glory and took her glory and washed his feet, trading her glory for his glory. She used what was glory to her and washed his feet with it. I believe the church has become too tight, too ritualistic, and we just need to let our hair down. We need to let our hair down and worship God in a real and relevant way. Because worshiping God has nothing to do with titles or positions. If you get the title and that takes your worship, you need to be stripped of the title. Amen. Amen. I'm just saying, if you become so important to the church that you can't worship God anymore, then perhaps you need to come back to church and go get a full-time job where you can be important. Amen. Whenever the work replaces the worship, you're in danger of coming to work every Sunday. And then when we do have those that break the box, you think it's uncouth and unnecessary to bless God. How crazy would it be for an individual to go to the hospital and tell the doctor what he needs? Y'all ain't hear what I'm saying. How crazy would it be to tell the doctor, I know my blood pressure. I know the diagnosis is going on in here. You came because you were hurting. All right? Anybody, there, especially if you don't like to go to the doctor, you only go when you need to go. So why are you going to go and tell the doctor, I got this? I just came to see you. The doctor going to tell you, sit down and let me run some diagnostics to see what's really going on. But I went on Google and Google said this, this, and this. This is what we do when we come to church and don't get what we need. We self-diagnose ourselves and then we come and sit our high-minded hips in the pews and tell God what we need and don't need. Came all the way to the hospital just to look at other people get healed. I came all the way to the hospital to watch other people go in and out of surgery. Knowing that you need surgery too. Come all the way to the hospital just to eat popcorn and watch the show. This is what we do every Sunday. We do it every Sunday. We watch people 
in and out of the triage, in and out of the emergency room, in and out of God's healing and blessing them, and we watch it, and then secretly wonder why I can't get what they got. Because you keep opening and pouring. <laughs> but when you get broken enough, you will realize that you have been chosen to change. Chosen to change the whole atmosphere. Chosen is waiting. Chosen is waiting for that person that God has designated to come and change the whole atmosphere. Stand to your feet. Stand to your feet. Chosen to change. Chosen to change the atmosphere. Beloved, this is a triage center. This is a hospital. God designed local assemblies to be places of healing, deliverance, restoration, reciprocity, and everything you can need from the Lord. He designed the local assembly to be that. So perhaps if that's not occurring, we need to change how we're doing things. Are we illegally practicing medicine? Because our license has been revoked and we don't know it. Are we still being endorsed by God? Does God still hold our charter if we're not operating, if we are uh, an abomination to our purpose? If lives aren't being changed, if you leave out of here every Sunday and you can't remember anything that was in the sermon, if you are not made the better because you are attending this local assembly, it could be that you're open or it could be that we need to recalibrate our tools. But I'm just rather, I'm just crazy enough to believe that every Sunday the doors of the church open we ought to be pulling chairs out because people want to be in God's presence so much. So every Sunday I come and I don't see it, I'm disappointed. I'm wondering what it is we must do to fulfill our purpose and our design for even being a church. Are we doing what it takes to be done? Are we or do we have an atmosphere that's conducive for worship? Or is God sending us a Mary, a woman of the night, that's going to show us where we really are? I challenge you today. Self-introspection moment. We have the divine privilege of serving the king of all kings in an organized fashion anytime we get the opportunity to. And I know it's not about falling out and, and running up and down the church, but that there ought to be a sign, a miracle, and a wonder. I'm pushing and I'm preaching until I see what the Lord said. I know what God called chosen to be. I know what God said that we shall be. But those that have been chosen to change things, Go ahead and let the box break. God can replace whatever you give. There's nothing you can give up to where God can't fully replace in exceeding and abundant fashion. But you've got to lay out before God. You've got to be broken and come to the Lord and say, Lord, here I am, naked and unashamed. I need you to work in my life in a miraculous, spectacular type of way. And when you become that broken, you will begin to see miracles, signs, and wonders. Is there anybody other than Pastor Shaw ready to see the glory of God hit this place? If you want to talk to me, anybody ready to see the glory, the glory of God hit this place like never before? I have prayed. Let's do it like this. Let's do it like this. If you 
if you have something that you have before God and you need even want God to do it for you you need or want God to do it you got something that you're praying about something that you're wanting something that you're needing from God and you need God to do it for you I mean I mean tangible manifestation I'm not talking about by and by I'm talking about you need God to show some tangible manifestation in your life in your house or even in this church I want you to come down to the altar I want you to come down so we can be on, on, on one accord. You, you believe in God for something spectacular, some, something miraculous, something that you have not seen, something that you want or need from the Lord. You want it, you can want it or need it, but you know that there is something more than what you are experiencing right now. You know there's more than this. Now, the fact that there is more don't mean you're in a bad place now. It just means that you want more. You have expectations of greatness from God, but we can't get comfortable and wait for God to come to us. Real quick, let me tell you this. Let me give you the synopsis of the story of the woman with the issue of blood. The deepest revelation I got from that text is that Jesus was not even going to the woman with the issue of blood. He was going to see Jairus' daughter. The woman with the issue of blood started going to him. Y'all see what I'm saying to you? He'll make himself available, but he likes to be sought after. He likes to be sought after. He likes for you to get up in the morning and sing praises and, and hymns and worship to him. He needs to know he's the first thing on your mind and the last thing before you go to sleep. I'm talking about seeing miracles, signs, and wonders. God wants to be sought after. He wants you to seek him while he yet may be found. It might not happen in church. We come to church for instructions and in righteousness and to gain an allocation of faith. But truth be told, your faith walk happens all week long. And if you seek after the Lord, seek after him with all of your heart, your mind, and your soul. And he didn't make it hard to do. Just seek him. Let him know that he's worth something to you. Let him know he's valuable to you. Let him know that he is still the lover of your soul. Don't get so comfortable with what he's done that you lose expectation of what he's still going to do. We've got comfortable with God. But I challenge you this, this, this morning, I still morning, I challenge you this morning to make God first. As soon as your eyes open, Tell the Lord thank you. Yes. Don't move. Don't get out of bed. Don't grab your phone. Don't go brush your teeth or wash your face. As soon as your eyes open, tell the Lord thank you. And if you have a little time, just worship Him right there in your bed. Say, Lord, thank you for this morning. I love you. I glorify you. I just thank you. You didn't have to do it, but you did, and I love you for that. Thank you for my family. Thank you for my strength. Just a moment of worship when you get up in the morning to prove to God that you still care that he touched you with the finger of love every morning. First thing on your mind, last thing on your mind, to show the Lord that you have not come so comfortable with him that you just expect him to wake you up in the morning. You just expect him to make a way out of no way. And you don't give him praise every time he does it. It is a tangible act every time God does something for us. It's not automatic. It's not it, what we fail to realize. We think that life is just automatic and it's just happening. But God is pulling the purse strings. You're here because of grace and mercy. So, those of you that are here, you know what you need. You know what you're praying for. 
I'm not coming down. I'm not trying to provoke an action from you. I'm not trying to get you to shake or quiver or fall. This is a sacred place. You're now standing on holy ground. You're standing on holy ground. So set your own holy ground. Whatever you need from the Lord, just begin to give it to him. Talk to him. You don't have to say it where anybody else can hear it. But what you are praying about, or if you have a prayer, just send it up in your mind if you don't want to pray out loud. But in this moment, just begin to get with God in your own little worship. Just for a moment. Just for a moment. Just for a moment. Just begin to talk to Him. Lord, thank you. Thank you for my life, health, and strength. Thank you for making a way out of my way. Heal my body, God. I know you can. Fix my finances, God. I know you can. Mend the broken home, Lord. I know you can. While I'm here in this moment, I'm giving it to you. While I'm here at this sacred place of the altar, I'm giving it to you. Work it out for me, Jesus. Save my children. Protect them. Cover them. Keep them. As they go to and fro, have a hedge of protection around them. Lord, bless my husband. Lord, bless my wife. Lord, bless my family. Bless my mother and my father. Lord, do it for me now. I know that you can. I know that you will. I know you're able, God. So I just worship you. Because you alone are worthy. I just want to thank you. I just want to thank you. Come on, just talk to him for a moment. Just, 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 just give him just a brief moment. Just a moment while you're down at this altar. Just, just begin to tell him. If you can't say anything else, just tell the Lord, thank you. If you can't think of anything to pray about, just tell the Lord, thank you. Just tell him, 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 thank you. He's here. He's here, beloved. He's here. Be it unto you according to your faith. Be it unto you according to your faith. Whatever you need, ask Him for it. If you need something, ask Him for it. Be it unto you according to your faith. According to how you believe, be it unto you. Be it unto you. God, we thank you for these precious souls gathered here in this house. We ask you to move in their lives in a miraculous way. Exceedingly, abundantly, above all they could ask or even thank God. Perform a miracle in their life today, God. Mend broken relationships. Heal broken places in their bodies, God. Fix the infirm places in their minds, God. Sew their spirit back together in the name of Jesus. I know you can, God. I know you will. Those that are waiting and expecting a tangible manifestation from you. Someone praying about a home, Father God. Fix it like only you can. Someone's praying about financial stability, Father God. Fix it ah, like only you can, God. Whatever the need may be, Father God. Meet them at the point of their needs today, God. I know you can, and I know you will. We have expectation from you, God. We, we dare not get comfortable and relaxed with what you've already done. Well, we refuse to give you glory for what you're yet going to do. We have expectations of greatness and glory. Keep it as fresh today as it was when we first had and we have an expectation of miracles, signs, and wonders in our homes and in our lives. Miracles, signs, and wonders in our homes and in our lives. Miracles, signs, and wonders in our homes and in our lives. Keep our expectation high. As the expectation is the beating ground for miracles. We give you glory. We give you the honor and the praise. It's in Jesus' name that we pray. Let the church say amen. amen. Let the church say amen. amen. One more time, say amen. amen. Hallelujah.
Praise God. Amen. Glory to God. Thank you. Thank you. Praise God. So as we hasten to a close, I would, I would real quick, I'd like to open up the doors of the church if anybody desires to become a member of this local assembly, either by full membership or by watch care, the doors of the church are open. Praise God. Amen. So there's nothing else to hold our attention.